Hello, this is Mr. Best. Welcome to Chapter 5, Homework Questions 100 through 105. Question 100. Eugene wants to use the cosine ratio to find y on this triangle. Part A. Which angle should he use to write an equation and solve for y using the cosine ratio? The cosine ratio uses adjacent hypotenuse. You can already see that we have the hypotenuse, so we want to be able to use this leg of y. And cosine is adjacent, so we want to use the angle of 29 degrees. 29 degrees then represents that the y is the adjacent side. If we tried to use the other angle, we'd have to use opposite, which would be sine. So we're going to use 29 degrees. We're going to set up an equation and solve for y. So we would go ahead and say, all right, we're going to use cosine of the angle of 29 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by 42. The exact answer would be y equals 42 times cosine of 29 degrees. And then we can plug that in our calculator and get the approximation. And we get a length of 36.73. And we'll just call this one unit since there's no measure. Labeled at least. Question 101. Copy the graph at the right onto graph paper. If the shape ABCDE were ro rotated around the origin 180 degrees, where would point A prime be? The best thing about this to do is to probably use the tracing paper, the patty paper. Um, 180 degrees is going to be a half a rotation. So if you put that kind of uh, crosshair in the middle where the origin is and then rotate it um, a half a turn or 180 degrees, same thing. Where would the new point A be? And that is going to be represented, um, you can kind of tell right here, they go all the way over to this side, this would be A prime. So A prime would move to negative 1, negative 2. If the shape, A, B, C, D, E, were reflected across the x-axis, where would point C prime be? So across the x-axis right here, so we can look at this, it is 4 units away, so we're going to reflect it 4 units this way, and this would represent C prime, and therefore C prime would be located at 4, comma, negative 4. And then the last one, if the shape A, B, C, D were translated so that each point corresponds to x minus 1, comma, y plus 3, where would point B prime B? Now, when you subtract 1, that means you're going to the left, 1 unit. And when you add 3 on the y, that just means you're going up 3 units. So we could do it with all 5 points, but it just wants to know B. So we'll focus on B. Now let's go ahead and go left 1, and then up 3. And that looks like it would be right up here. B prime, and that would be at 3, comma, 4. So B prime would be at 3, comma, 4. Question 102 on graph paper: Graph the line y equals negative, or sorry, y equals 3 fourths x plus 6. Then find the slope angle. That's the acute angle the line makes with the x-axis. So let's go ahead and graph. We have a y-intercept at 0, 6 with a slope of 3 fourths. So we can go up 3 over 4. We can also go down 3 and to the left. Four units, and so that represents our line, and then we also have to find the slope angle, and what that means by the slope angle, we're just trying to figure out the angle, and you can really do it at any point, it says marks with the x-axis, but as long as you're making it, you know, with a line parallel to the x-axis, it's all going to be the same because it's linear, so we're looking for this angle measure right here. Well, we know this length is 4, and we know this length is 3. Uh, if you remember your special right triangles, you know the hypotenuse of that would be 5. Not that that's necessary, but just a little fact. Um, and then we can use, since we have adjacent and um, opposite, we can use the tangent. So I'm going to say tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. And since we're looking for the angle measure, we've got to use the inverse of tangent to figure out what theta is, so make sure you press the inverse of tangent of 3 divided by 4, and you will get theta to be approximately 36 point, um, I guess we'll go two places, 36.87 degrees. So the slope angle is 36.87. Question 103, an 8-foot ladder leaning against a house touches 7 feet above the ground. Draw a diagram and determine the measure of the angle created by the ladder and the ground. 
like we did one of these a couple of days ago. Let's see. So we have a, a house again. Um, lovely ladder. And the ladder is eight feet. Leaning up against the house touches seven feet above the ground. So this represents our seven feet. And we're looking for the angle created by the ladder and the ground. So this angle right here, the ladder and the ground. So we have the opposite and hypotenuse. So that means we're looking for sine of theta of 7 over 8. And once again, we're looking for the angle measure. So we are going to use inverse of sine to solve. So you have the inverse of sine of 7 eighths. So you get an approximation of 61 point zero or 61 degrees approximately so not exactly approximately fix that so theta is approximately 61 degrees question 104 this problem is a checkpoint for multiplying polynomials and solving quadratic equations it will be referred to as checkpoint 5a so once again these checkpoints really mean that we should have mastered these concepts up to this point uh, this one is, includes two things, multiplying polynomials and solving quadratics. So it looks like we have two multiplying and two uh, solving. So let's go ahead and get started. Part A, we are multiplying a what's called a monomial one term times a binomial. So 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 3 would be 6x. And there's nothing to solve here, so this is um, this would be your answer. That's it. On B, you have 3x plus 2 times x minus 3. This might be an opportunity to do your generic rectangle where you have 3x plus 2 as one of your side lengths and x minus 3. And then you can just figure out the area of each individual piece and then combine those together. And so this would be equal to, um, I'm going to write it below it, have enough room here. We have 3x squared. I'm going to combine the negative 9x and the 2x. That will be negative 7x and then minus 6. So this represents what we call the product. It's a length times the width. And then the other part is the sum where we've taken all the parts and added them together. Um, so that's the multiplying part where we're multiplying polynomials using the distributive property or the generic rectangle. On the second half of this, we have other options in terms of solving quadratic equations. We have factoring, zero product property, um, we can use completing the square um, or the quadratic formula. So we have some options here. I'll try to do a couple different ones so you can see them as we go along. So on the first one, x squared minus 8x plus um, 7, I'm going to do completing the square. I did one earlier on a different video, but um, just to once again show you the one I did in the other video, it didn't work because it was a no solution. So this one should work. So just so my apologies, my video stopped. Um, let's go back and, and talk about C again. We're going to do completing the square. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. We want to create our generic rectangle, but we want it to be a square. So when we put our x squared there, we know this has to be x times x. Now we have negative 8x. We need to split that up into two even groups. So we're going to do negative 4x and negative 4x. And that allows us to create our square, x minus 4 times x minus 4. But that means we need 16 of those 1 tiles. Right now, we only have 7. So we're going to add 9 to both sides. And by doing that, we've now created this square that is linked x minus 4 times x minus 4. So we'll write it as x minus 4 squared. But now it's equal to 9. Um, now we can ask ourselves, we can, you know, think inside here and, and, and try to figure out, you know, what squared gives me 9? That's either 3 or negative 3. Or you can solve it by working backwards and taking the square root. But that will give us the absolute value of x minus 4 is equal to 3. And there's two values that do that. That would be negative 3. x minus 4 could equal negative 3. Or x minus 4 could equal positive 3. Because when you take the absolute value um, of negative 3 or 3, you still get a positive 3. So x could equal 1 or x could equal 7. So we have two solutions for that. And once again, I did show you completing the square. There's there's other ways definitely to do that. One would be to factor it. I'm going to show you that on D. Another one would be to use the quadratic formula. Uh, on D, I will show you this one by factoring, but I have to subtract the 15 first uh, to get it equal to zero. And then we'll use our generic rectangle. We're going to do it in terms of what we did with completing the square. That's different 
because we have to figure out how many 1's we need. Whereas this, we know we have y squared and there's negative 15. We're trying to figure out what's going to multiply, because they the products across the diagonals are the same, what multiplies to give us negative 15 y squared, but then it has to add to still give us the negative 2y that we started with. And that would be negative 5y and positive 3y. So you can put those in the generic rectangle and then figure out the side lengths. We know y times y is y squared, y times negative 5 is negative 5y, and y times 3 is 3y. So that allows us to factor into y minus 5 times y plus 3 is equal to 0. Set your factors equal to 0 using the zero product property. And then we find our answers to be y equals 5 or negative 3. And so once again, I would really focus on maybe going back and finding some more problems where you have to solve quadratic equations using those three different methods. It doesn't matter what method you know how to do, um, but sometimes you can't factor, so you have to be able to use the quadratic formula, which I didn't show you on this one, or completing the square. Question 105. The spinners below are spun and the results are added. Find the probability that the sum is 4. So I'm going to create an area model here uh, where we have spinner 1 and there are two possibilities um, and that would be 4 or 2. Now I didn't break them up, you know, this is more of a generic model. So 2 would be 1 fourth of the circle and 4 would be 3 fourths. And then over here we have spinner number 2, and it has three different sections, um, 2, 4, and 6, and it looks like they're all broken up into thirds, so that would be 1 third, 1 third, and 1 third. Um, so to see in terms of if I spun a, a 2 and then a 4, this would be 3 fourths times 1 third, so that's 3 twelfths. Uh, these would all be 3 twelfths since those are all 1 third. And then 1 fourth times 1 third is 1 twelfth. And same thing, these are all going to be 1 twelfth as well. So what we're looking for is that the probability that the sum is 4. So um, 4 plus 2, none of that will work. The only one that looks like where you can add to get a sorry, sum of 4 would be 2 plus 2, which would be that one. Oh, that wasn't right. There we go. One more try. Okay. Um, all the other ones are going to give you something higher than that. So it looks like the probability for spinning a sum of 4 will be 1 out of 12. For part B, find the probability that the sum is 8. So, let's see if I can get rid of this one here. Whoops. All right, there we go. Uh, sum is 8, so 4 plus 2, nope, 4 plus 4, that looks good, and then 2 plus 6. So these two, so we need to take, I'm getting there, here we go, 3 twelfths plus 1 twelfth, and that would represent 4 twelfths, or that can be simplified to 1 third. 